you can't tell because he looks very innocent right now. But I am defending breakfast from a dog. Most of this came from the yard or from local suppliers. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to show you a bit of my garden and the harvest and what's up. <laughs> and how we eat on Sunday morning. This is the scraps from dinner last night, the leftover cabbage leaves that I didn't put in the soup or roast. Um, I took a knife and just cut out the stems and then roasted them like a broccoli substitute, which was super, super tasty. These ones are a little woody and a little old, so they're going to go to the chickens. I like chickens. Uh, I think that still counts as using them because then the chickens will make eggs and we will eat the eggs. So that's, we're trying to be not wasteful. And I also uh, took the shells from the peas that were too tough for us to eat, but the chickens will be very happy with them. Hey buddy. Yeah, good job bud. That is Legolas. He is our king rooster. He is protecting the flock. And that is gentrification. Because I have weird names for my chickens. But mini garden tour experiment. Uh, this is the hugel bed. So we have some spinach and I tried to plant marigolds. I think they're not marigolds. <laughs> I think I accidentally got calendula because they call them the same on the seed packet here. Um, and there are way too many brassicas in this bed. There is a Brussels sprout which you can see is starting to set little teeny tiny sprouts in the arms. Um, two broccoli, uh, two of this purple-ish kale. Uh, these are my spinach trees <laughs> that I keep harvesting spinach off of. Uh, this is a pineapple weed plant that I transplanted into this bed um, and a strawberry that I found. And then these are raspberries that are just running off of this main plant which same as the other the previous owners had a rose bush here i pulled it out and then i took a plant from my neighbors um, across the street they were thinning out their plants and so i got a free raspberry two free raspberry bush bushes that i put in uh three and a half years ago and they're just giving me new plants and so much like this guy just is coming out of nowhere dig them up move him to a place where you'd rather have him. I'm letting him go for now just because I don't mind having extra potential raspberries this year. And we've eaten all of the primocane fruit that came earlier. Um, so you can see the remnants of a raspberry and we've got new raspberries coming up now and flowers. So we should have raspberries from these for at least another two months, which is kind of exciting. Um, and then we've got yellow squash in here that's getting close to being ready to pick. Um, and there is a cucumber hidden in the back there. Uh, a plum tomato and a beefsteak tomato and a pumpkin. I also planted a watermelon in the middle, but it got outcompeted by all of this. Totally fine. Seeds were saved from a watermelon I had grown last year. Um, and this guy, I is gonna probably will be our first pumpkin to get it together that we can harvest and eat. And so we did a, an experiment where we built two of the same beds. Um, they're slightly different because what I thought was a pineapple weed turned out to actually be a chamomile. So I've been harvesting the chamomile from here. Uh, so we had an actual chamomile and a wild chamomile. Um, and then what I thought was another one of these spinach volunteers that I had found out here in the row uh, turned out to be a sunflower. So we have one sunflower in here um, and chamomile. So it just has slightly different plants, but it does have another volunteer strawberry that I found in the ground. Um, and overall, plants at the same time, transplants were relatively the same, but this is not doing nearly as well as that. Um, this one is a permaculture bed. The other is a no dig bed. So what we did was we just laid cardboard down and then filled it with the soil that I get at the recycling center and planted them out. That one, the no dig, super prolific, been eating out of it. This is also good, but this one is showing signs of powdery mildew. The growth is more stunted, as you can tell. The pumpkin in this one actually almost died, and now it's recovering and coming back. The cucumber in this one is doing better. So 
anything that is super water loving and nitrogen rich, this one is doing better. So the permaculture is better if you're trying to grow the leafy greens, but if you're trying to grow something fruiting, um, the tomatoes, right, like it seems to be doing better in the node dig versus the permaculture. And the permaculture, we put some fabric cloth down as weed suppressant and then filled that with uh, pine shavings and chicken filth from the chickens so that we could have like a little bit of a hotbed. This one should, in theory, start earlier and go later, um, but we are having some high moisture problems. And this one got mushrooms in it the other day. So that was terrifying to see these giant mushrooms in June at like the height of our heat in this bed. It was very confusing. Um, yeah, we hadn't gotten rain in uh, like a good two weeks, which very different right now. Um, and this one was having a bunch of moisture problems. So I was needing to water that bed, but not this one. So if you do have moisture issues and you need to water less, or if your watering bill is really expensive, then I highly recommend trying something like this with the permaculture because it really does work as a water absorption. Um, and I'll post some pictures of the progress of these two beds um, so that you can see what that looks like. But this bed is fabric cloth, and then you can actually see some of it. Right, so like fabric cloth and then just the bedding from the chickens with their hot compost. And then, so I think the other thing is that this might've been too hot uh, for them. And like anything that has deeper roots, like more shallow rooted that was in the finished compost is doing better. Anything that was trying to reach deeper might've been getting burned by the hot compost. So that might've been the other issue with the pumpkin. Um, I don't know, it's science. So, but the tomatoes are getting it together. We're getting blossoms. The cucumbers getting it together. We're getting blossoms. And maybe we can see a pumpkin hiding back there. So, yeah. So this is my sad little pumpkin plant trying to get it together compared to that monster, which is out of the bed, over the wall, starting to go up, and then I'm training it to go across the front of my house so that hopefully we'll just have pumpkins all the way across, which would be awesome. And then if those... Uh, Asian winter squash, the kabucha, if those get them together, then they'll go up those trellises and potentially I'll train one this way to meet these pumpkins and then I'll train the other one that way so that it fills out the whole thing. So if we could get pumpkins all the way across for Halloween for my dad's birthday, I think that'd be pretty sweet. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to need to harvest some of this uh, yellow squash because that guy is looking to be right at the peak and that might be breakfast. Um, and then in here, I just have oregano that I planted uh, a couple years ago, and it's just now a perennial plant in here. There's a couple of broad beans that I sowed in here, and this is my first time sowing kohlrabi. I just threw some seeds in the bed and hoped for the best. Um, they are more germinated than I expected, so I've been thinning them out and then just kind of using them as like a bok choy substitute. Uh, and they've been working out. They're really nice. They have a much milder flavor than I thought they would. But um, yeah, we're going to have to do that. And then just there's some flea beetle damage because I've been having lots of trouble with flea beetles this year. Um, but these are all in the same area. And the only place where I have these bastards is on my nasturtium. So these guys normally love cabbages right? But they are taking out the nasturtium. So if you are like me and you like a lot of brassicas, come pl always plant nasturtium. Because look, there's none there. And I got two here. I picked 15 of these guys off the other day. Um, and they are in a wonderful, magical jar in my greenhouse right now. And I'm using them for fishing bait. I didn't catch anything, but uh, yeah, that is the plan. Yeah, nasturtiums for the win. First time growing nasturtiums and as a trap crop for uh, the cabbage moths and the cabbage loopers, I cannot recommend it highly enough. Like, it, it's awesome. This is my bait jar, which I just keep taking damaged nasturtium leaves and feeding them. It's a reuse of a sprouting jar. Uh, this is keeping the cabbage moths and loopers from getting out and is basically like a little terrarium for them. Um, 
And yeah, they are producing a lot of poop. So much poop, which I will probably throw into my compost and use like worm castings, which like, that's cool. Um, I keep debating whether or not I should be throwing them in my compost because they are breaking this down way faster than I could ever imagine. But um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how many I get. And there's the one little cabbage looper with all of his, his friends. Now that I'm not distracted by needing to move cabbage loopers, uh, here is one of the purple kales that is out here. And then this is another pumpkin that I'm letting trail out and across. We've got at least three arms on it. And then it's coming up this little trellis that I threw together really fast with two T-posts and some leftover fencing. Um, this is another pumpkin, which, was just growing in a very small pot and I pulled it out and just put a little bit of extra dirt around it and then mounded it up and then I'm just covering it with plastic to keep its roots from drying out while it gets reestablished. Um, it is definitely dealing with a little bit of transplant shock. It is not happy, but it is making me a pumpkin, um, which is kind of insane given how small it is and the very tiny pot that it was growing in. Uh, but this guy was transplanted at the same time into here and again, doing much, much better. Uh, it's got one little guy in there that I'm gonna need to prune off because it's got blossom end rot. It clearly did not get uh, pollinated. So if you can see, uh, I will get that guy for you. So this is what an unfertilized blossom end rot uh, curry, red curry pumpkin looks like. It is not pretty. It will not make you food. All it is doing is stressing out the plants and taking energy away from it. So that is out and that can go onto the ground. Um, but yeah, uh, if you've never... If you've never grown squash before, or um, pumpkins, anything like that, that has male and female flowers, this is what a male flower looks like. It has a single piston, I think, stamen, yeah. Oh, my flower anatomy is not good. Uh, but you can identify them when you look at the flower itself because it only has one inside, and that's where the pollen comes from. And if you look at the shaft of it, when it's open, there's no fruit body at the base. So this is a three different stages of development. This is a brand new male bud, an elongated junior male bud, fully mature male bud. This will be open today, probably die back tomorrow. Down below it, you can see an immature female blossom. So there's a flower with a body, a fruit body behind it. So if you're gonna harvest squash blossoms to eat, you wanna take these guys, not your baby pumpkins. I mean, you can, because you can eat them if you want. And I do that with my yellow squash, if I think it didn't get properly... Like, if this guy had blossom end rot, I probably would take him and eat him. But he, I think, is doing okay. So they're starting to get a little bit bigger. I think stunted growth on that guy is just because it's in here and small. So, same thing. We've got a small fertilized pumpkin here. Um, if that starts to rot, I will take it off, but I think we're okay. And again, another female here who her blossom fell off. So hopefully she got fertilized. We have a lot of males. And then I'm gonna see if I can find you a female flower, probably on my yellow squash. That is open. Nope, okay. So I'm just gonna do a little dissection on this girl. So. There is a cluster of flowers. Right. You can see that there's a cluster of flowers rather than the single. So they have that one, it's easy to identify. So if you can't see the base because it's hidden with foliage, that is how you can tell. Oh, and this guy is just falling off. So we're gonna dissect a pumpkin. So that is what the lady bits look like. So as long as the pollen gets in there, it'll make a pumpkin. Um, I hand pollinated this one because I wanted to make sure that we had at least one good pumpkin. But as you can see, there are tons of little female blossoms coming all over this plant. So uh, there's one right there at the end. So hopefully we will get a surplus of 
pumpkins. The first year I grew these, I had two plants and I ended up harvesting 40 pumpkins um, and they took over the backyard completely. In this bed is probably the biggest mistake we have ever made. Uh, there are two asparagus plants that have been in here for over a year. And so this was supposed to be an asparagus bed and then with some annuals, there are some volunteer uh, sunflowers and we planted a bunch of Spetzkoll and Brussels sprouts in here, not realizing how big they got because this is my first year growing both Brussels sprouts and um, headed cabbage. I normally only grow leafy cabbage um, and lots of broccoli and kale and that you can keep under control because they don't need the big leaves to produce the heads um but yeah so this is the stunted cabbage group uh but the brussels sprout that is in this hugel bed is one of these so it is definitely getting better now that it's given more space and room to grow and is much happier this mystery cabbage uh, also came out of there. Um, just was like, I'm going to pull one out and see what happens. Uh, but it is not nearly as happy as the Brussels sprout. And I still can't tell if it's supposed to be a Brussels sprout or a Spetzkoll. It has split in three. So it is definitely uh, deciding to become its own thing. And that's okay with me. Uh, you can still harvest leaves and eat them. Brassicas, the entire plant is edible. So it's just a matter of figuring out a way to process it so that you can eat it and that it's tasty for you. Um, and then there's also just arugula and an assertion that is not that happy. I think this bed is actually probably suffering from not having deep enough soil and roots because of the asparagus. And we had radishes in here too, which I let bolt and go to seed. Um, and we'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm just going to pull one of these, which did not produce any seed pods, but you can see what they were. So they're just like the little two-tone pretty radishes and I liked them. So I was gonna see if they would get it together for me and I could harvest their seed and replant them. But this is a, a, an experiment that has failed. So that's okay. The slugs can have that guy. Um, these are potatoes just growing in an Ikea bag. So just an Ikea shopping bag full of dirt with uh, some potatoes that sprouted in the pantry. And these should be ready to harvest probably in another couple weeks or a month just depending on when they die back I keep thinking they're dying back and then they keep just on producing beautiful green leaves um, these are some volunteer chrysanthemums from last year uh, I sowed some noodle beans in here and some of the runners or sorry not the runners the suckers from my tomato plants inside and they are starting to set blossoms and there's some more suckers that we just pulled off and stuck straight in the dirt um, and haven't really taken care of them. I tend to be very mean to my plants and if they get it together, they get it together. Um, and then these are some beets that we had sown months ago, but that had been attacked by the birds and were stunted and hidden under a giant cabbage um, in another part of the garden. And so I rescued them and we put them in and they're starting to get it together. I don't know that we will ever actually get a beet from them, but they are producing leaves and you can harvest that and eat them like chard. And they are very delicious and tender. Um, and then this is another mistake that I planted you way too early um, or late, depending on how you look at it. Uh, this is a pok choy or a, a kind of bok choy that's just flowering and huge and ridiculous and eaten by bugs but I'm using you as a trap crop right now to keep this bean plant as healthy as possible um, and we will see if it actually gets it together because there's no guarantee um, these even though they are bolted and they're weird they still have been really tasty in stir fries so I'm not mad about having this weird little plant it even though it's kind of ugly and getting riddled with pests uh, it's still kind of pretty in its own sad way and it's filling out that corner of the bed and not making me want to put another inappropriate plant in its place. These are last year's carrots which I let go to seed. Um, they're actually creating these very pretty white umbels and hopefully I will be able to save the seed from that and then replant them. Um, this is my kale bed which also has gone to seed. These kale plants are three years old now um, and so I We'll probably come and harvest the seed off here later. Uh, these, all the other small kale plants in here are volunteers from last year's seed. Um, and then that is just some wood sorrel growing, which is very nice. Um, 
little citrusy, little bitey. Uh, nasturtium keeps the bugs away. Uh, some lemon balm, which looks like it's about to flower. Uh, and then there's carrots interplanted and a couple of beans hidden because I overplant everything. This is the other. Oh God, we didn't realize how big cabbages get bed where we planted too many. Um, but some of them seem to be kind of healthy and okay. Um, I've just severely stunted their growth. They probably are doing nothing but taking nutrients from this bed. Um, and then these radishes that bolted are actually daikon radishes that I planted three years ago. And every year I let them bolt and go to seed and then I cover them back up with soil and then they come up again and I never actually harvest them. They end up being a cover crop. And uh, if I remember to do it, when the seed pods are young, I harvest those and I eat them and I throw them in salads because I actually prefer the radish seed pod to the radish itself. Um, it's got a milder flavor. It's really crunchy. It makes a really good pickle. And uh, when they're older, you can stir fry them, but these are past that point And I just ran out of time and forgot about them. So occasionally you end up with accidental seed, like uh, lots and lots of seed. So I've got a vault of random radishes that have clearly cross pollinated. You can tell just based on the color of the stems that are on here that they're different um, because I grow three or four kinds of radishes primarily as trap crops so that the the slugs go after the radishes instead of my strawberries. Um, I've got cross-pollinated weird hybrid radishes so I pulled a very pretty purple radish that looked like a daikon but was just deep deep purple um, the other day which is cool but I don't it was way too woody. It had. Um, it was no longer at the point where you could eat it, uh, but it probably could go into a soup or something and flavor it that way. But uh, yeah, these are some of my fails, and I want to show you that I fail because pretending that you don't is just a mistake, right? Like it's a different mistake. <laughs> Owning up to your failures and trying to learn from them, I think, is the most important. That's how we grow. And this is the harvest from the garden for breakfast. So two eggs from my chickens. They're so warm um, and they're a little dirty. One of my girls is gross uh, and she pooped on her egg. So those need to be used now. They're not good for storage. Um, so those are the, the gross eggs always get sequestered and put in a pile so that we know to use them first because they uh, will go bad faster. Um, this is it's a yellow squash. It's not huge, but that's enough for us for breakfast. And then uh, three, yeah, red Russian kale leaves and two of my purple kale. So kale and squash and eggs for breakfast. So that is two eggs sunny side up. One of the yolks broke, so just went with it. Um, and then this is a saute vegetables with garlic, yellow onion, salt, pepper, the yellow squash, the five kale leaves, and that's breakfast. And then I had leftover steak from last night. Um, I made extra because my boyfriend was supposed to go to work today, but he is homesick, unfortunately. But that means we have leftover steak. So steak and eggs for breakfast. Everything on this plate is either grown in the garden or from a local supplier. Um, we have garlic that we grew in our garden that I have curing right now. Um, and so I'm only using them when I'm making special meals and I'm getting rid of the extra garlic I have that I bought to plant for seed in the backyard. So we have uh, green garlic going right now that I'm hoping to overwinter and uh, get nice big bulbs next year. Um, Cause I'm a very silly person who got very small garlic this year. So I'm overdoing it next year. Um, yeah, um, happy Sunday. I know someone's going to be like, oh God, that steak is so overcooked. No, it is not. It is still pink and tender and beautiful.